We're going to set up a phase noise simulation, and we begin in the system analysis, where, as always, you have to set your measurement bandwidth to something that makes sense for you. This is the bandwidth that's going to be used to integrate and report signal power and noise power. So it has a direct effect on how the noise floor looks. So set that correctly. And then on the Calculate tab, make sure that Phase Noise is enabled. Notice that we're asking for extra noise points in a bandwidth around each signal. This makes the noise floor nice and smooth, like this one here, thanks to those extra noise points. So if you don't like a jagged noise floor like this one down here, that's how to do it. We're done in the analysis. The next thing is just to make sure that something on the schematic has phase noise. So in this down converter circuit, we could add phase noise to the source or to the local oscillator. And in fact, that is exactly what we've done. Or in Pathwave system, all the RF amp models have phase noise. They have two port or residual phase noise. And this is how you enable it. So make sure that something on your schematic has phase noise and then simulate. After a couple of seconds, we can look at the spectrum if we'd like. This lower plot is a plot of phase noise only, whereas this is total node noise. How is it possible that phase noise is below thermal noise? That's easy. The simulator keeps track of signals, harmonics, intermods, and noise totally separately and breaks noise down into thermal and phase noise. So when the simulator calculates all these numbers separately and plots them on the same set of axes, some of them are going to be lower than others. You wouldn't see this on a spectrum analyzer, but for the simulator, it's easy to show the exact levels of each piece of spectrum. Now, many people like to see a single sideband noise plot where the carrier is over on the left side and the phase noise extends to the right. That plot does not exist in Pathwave system. However, we made one. And we did it by writing our own MATLAB. Never let the absence of the exact measurement you want stop you from making it yourself by writing enough MATLAB. In this case, this is the MATLAB necessary to generate the single sideband plot. So although it wasn't a native plot that existed, we made it happen with MATLAB. Down here in the lower left, we have a level diagram of phase noise channel power, which is the amount of power at each node of phase noise only. So once again, we are plotting only phase noise, and the phase noise jumps up across this amplifier, not only because of the gain of that amp, but remember, we turned on residual phase noise of the first stage. The phase noise goes down across a filter, not only because of the loss of the filter, but because the filter has skirts that remove some noise, especially as you get farther away from the center frequency. And the phase noise went up across the mixer because of the phase noise, the addition of the local oscillator phase noise. Finally, we have a table here of several different measurements, channel frequency, desired channel power, channel noise power, phase noise channel power, and stage dynamic range. This is here to remind us that when you're troubleshooting a circuit like this, a table is very useful because your eye can scan these different measurements and make sense out of the relationship of the power levels shown here. Imagine how cluttered 
a graph would be if we try to cram all of these measurements onto a graph. But yet a table is easy to read. And there's no interpolation. The exact values are always shown. The channel frequency at each node is shown. That's very useful whenever you have a mixer or a multiplier in your circuit. So don't forget that when you're troubleshooting a circuit like this, a table is actually more useful than a graph. That's how you set up phase noise. Thanks for watching.